Okay, today we're going to talk about anaerobic respiration in other organisms. Um, so we're going to think about anaerobic respiration in muscle and then look at in yeast and plants um, and look at um, some experiments and experiments, uh, look at predictions, explaining outcomes um, and then uh, some extension you might think of modifications to the experiments and how to extend them. So first little activity starter five minutes five questions bit of retrieval practice there are some questions on other topics here as well so have a think five minutes pause the video here okay so let's check your answers so hopefully you remember the equation for anaerobic respiration in muscle is just glucose goes to lactic acid remember it's that incomplete breakdown only a small amount of energy releasing when the lactic acid is toxic Okay, so you have to break it down, think about remembering about oxygen debt and all that sort of stuff we've done about exercise. Then, state uses of energy within cells. Do any anabolic process, so protein synthesis, um, cellulose synthesis if it's in plants, lipid synthesis, DNA replication, um, things like that. You can have active transport, uh, muscle contraction, heat for maintaining body temperature in plants and, uh, sorry, not plants, in um, birds and mammals, um, nerve impulses, and cell division. Roles of white blood cells, bit of retrieval practice, just remembering stuff from a while ago. Um, antibody production, those specific proteins that bind to antigens, antitoxins, and phagocytosis, they are basics, if you remember those. Um, then, what type of organism is yeast? So hopefully you remember that yeast is a fungus, it is a unicellular fungus, so single-celled. Um, it's a eukaryote, so like plant cells and animal cells and protists has a nucleus, um, membrane bound organelles, all those sorts of things, and it does extracellular digestion, so it secretes enzymes, and amylase is an enzyme, and its role is to break down or hydrolyze starch into sugars. Okay, so let's have a think about anaerobic respiration in other organisms then. So um, some bacteria do similar kind of anaerobic respiration to um, humans, so some of them produce lactic acid, um, and they're called, funnily enough, lactic acid bacteria. And actually for us, they're quite important in terms of food manufacture, so making yogurt and cheese and sauerkraut and other things like pickles um, and um, soured cream, all things like that, because they produce acids that make things sour. And the key thing is also that it's a preservative. You know, milk going off was seen as bad, but actually, lactic acid bacteria through many many generations of selecting the right type of bacteria preserves the milk it lasts longer because it makes the ph low um, other microorganisms that would cause maybe poisoning or the food to decay more quickly are prevented from growing okay they're either killed or their reproduction rate is slowed right down um, and actually if you buy um, natural yogurt that hasn't been pasteurized it's still got live cultures in it you can take a spoonful of that and add it into um, UHT milk for example UHT milk is good to use because it's got no bacteria in it at all whereas pasteurized milk still does have bacteria in it. Um, it you can make your own yogurt from it and you could actually have a go at doing that um, if you're really clean you know sterilize everything with hot water before you start um, you could get some live yogurt and some UHT milk and make some of your own yogurt and see what happens to keep it covered so it doesn't get contaminated okay sauerkraut um, is pickled cabbage basically um, an acquired taste um, they also get changes in the proteins so the acid being produced causes the proteins in the milk to coagulate and thicken um, in things like cheese you also have other things added like enzymes um, and things like that um, that also cause changes okay so give yourself just a couple of minutes make a couple of just a couple of notes on this really just basics you don't need much okay so what about in yeast okay so this is a key focus we're going to look at today so yeast can actually respire aerobically and anaerobically if it's got lots of food if you have loads of sugar yeast will actually respire anaerobically and often we talk about anaerobic respiration as fermentation okay so the formula for fermentation or anaerobic respiration in yeast is glucose no oxygen again goes to ethanol and carbon dioxide ethanol is a two carbon compound um, so um, it's been broken down actually what you get from the glucose remember glucose is six carbon compounds it could just be any sugar here 
sucrose, maltose, etc. Ethanol is a two carbon compound, and you get two for every glucose, you get two ethanol molecules, and you also get two carbon dioxide. So you have four carbons here and two carbons from the two carbon dioxide there. Okay, so we do get gas given off with aer anaerobic respiration and yeast in the same way as with aerobic respiration, whereas in mammals um, and in bacteria with that lactic acid formation, we wouldn't get any carbon dioxide. We get energy given off. Um, it's an incomplete breakdown again, though, so only a small amount of energy is released. Um, but as I said, yeast will often respire anaerobically if there's loads of this. Even if there's oxygen present, it will often do this because this is a simpler pathway. It's quick. Um, and so if there's loads of glucose, it will get enough energy for what it needs. Um, um, but ethanol is toxic and actually it will build up in the environment, especially if it's a closed environment like a, a flask or something like that. And eventually the yeast will be killed by it in the same way as our cells are damaged by lactic acid. And ethanol is also toxic to us. Um, that's why it get, you get drunk if you drink it. Um, in yeast it will kill it eventually. So actually you can't um, ferment things above about 12-13% by volume um, of alcohol. Okay, so just make a couple of notes there. Okay, so let's think about where we use um, anaerobic respiration in yeast. Um, and also remember plants also do um, anaerobic respiration in this way. So yeast is important in food manufacture and production of uh, bread. Okay, so all leavened bread or raised bread products generally contain um, yeast in them to make the dough rise and it's actually the carbon dioxide being given off there and it is likely to be anaerobic respiration here because if you think about making a dough it's very dense and not going to be much oxygen in there. Um, you can make bread without yeast and that's, um, you know, soda bread is made with bicarbonate of soda and that just decomposes with the heat from the oven to cause CO2 but um, you know, normal bread contains um, yeast in it. Some breads like sourdoughs will have the natural yeast that are in the flour and also bacteria. That's what gives it that sour sourness because you'll also get some lactic acid there from the bacteria that would be in the sourdough. But normal bread just has yeast in it. You don't get drunk from bread, um, A, because it's not fermented for that long and B, because when you bake it, any ethanol that's produced will evaporate. Um, you also get beer. So beer is generally made from um, barley, sometimes from wheat, sometimes from rice, depending on the beers. Um, so it's brewed using what's called malted barley, which is barley grains that are allowed to germinate. So the starch in them starts to be hydrolyzed into sugars and then it ferments the sugars. Um, wine comes from fermented grapes. Um, and grapes have lots of sugar in them. So natural source of um, sugar for the, for the alcohol production there. And then you can also make spirits. Um, spirits, remember, are much higher alcohol content. Um, so they will be... Um, distilled because remember you can't make vodka you know which is about 35 40 percent by volume alcohol um, just by fermentation because um, the yeast would be killed so you distill a fermented cheap usually something cheap like wheat barley or vodka is often made from potatoes um, you literally just ferment those um, and then you would distill the alcohol off it is illegal to do your own distillation in this country. It's quite dangerous. You get other things other than ethanol produced, which can be toxic. So you have to have a license to do it. Anyway, just make a couple of notes on any of those points. Okay, we're gonna look at a video now. You'll need to click on the link. Um, there should be a button on the video that you can click or put this um, link in and have a look at this experiment. It's an American chap doing the experiment. Watch it all the way through. You can pause it. You can click on to the you know move on to the next slide on this video if you want to look at the questions, and then be answering the um, questions on the next slide. So, here are the questions. Um, so, what variables were controlled in the experiment? There's some flasks in the experiment. What were the purposes of them? Answer these questions. Okay, once you've watched the video, and you should be able to answer a lot of these questions based on knowledge we've already talked about or you already know um, about from previous lessons. So give yourself 15 minutes maximum to complete these questions. Okay, now I'm going to be generous and hear the answers to them. Please make sure you have actually had a go at doing the questions. There's no point you just writing the answers down without you thinking about them. So, um, 
the key variables we would have controlled are things like the temperature, the volume of water, the mass of the yeast, and sugar used or flour as well. Okay, he also used the same balloons, although that's massively important. Um, so what was the point that there were two flasks there that had things missing? And the reason you do this in an experiment, an experiment you set up, you should always set up a control. So the control is there sometimes as a comparison, but you've got two controls here. Um, you've got water and yeast only and sugar and water only. So A, the yeast is um, needs a carbohydrate. So you've got the yeast there, but there's no other food source. Now actually the yeast would have some food stores of its own, but not enough to make those balloons inflate. Um, so it's showing you need carbohydrate for the yeast to respire, or a food source to respire. And B, there's no yeast, so it's showing that the sugar on its own doesn't break down when it's added to water and give off carbon dioxide. And that's why you have controls. It's showing you that all the things, what is required for it to work. Now, flask three is actually also a kind of control because you boiled the, all this stuff before you started. Um, so the key thing is when you boil it, it's really high temperature, so you're going to denature the enzymes to do with respiration. In fact, all the enzymes in the yeast um, cells um, so the yeast cells will die. Remember, yeast is a cell, it's a living thing, but it contains the enzymes that do respiration. What was given off? Hopefully, easy peasy answer, carbon dioxide, and that increases the pressure in the flask. He talked about the fact that you could measure the pressure. If we had things like a delivery tube attached to it, a bung, you could measure bubbles of gas bubbling up into another tube of water or something like that. Um, in this case, it inflated the balloons. So what was going on in flask two and five? Fairly straightforward. Anaerobic respiration was going on. The carbohydrate, the sugar, or the flowers, the carbohydrate and the flowers being respired and carbon dioxide is given off. And also they would be given um, ethanol be being produced. Okay, you could put more detail in here about the idea of the pressure and making the balloons rise because you're explaining the results. Okay, then finally question six, what's found in the flower? And why was the rate of gas production slower in this flask? And explain in detail and these are the kinds of questions you get in exams is not just say oh what's what's there you've got to talk about why and what's going on using your biological knowledge and actually if you thought about the questions at the start of the um, lesson you might have, that might have helped you so the key thing here is carbohydrate in flour is mostly starch um, starch can't be used a big molecule remember so the yeast has to break down the starch using amylase um, breaks down the sugars um, by extracellular digestion, hopefully maybe you remembered that, um, and then it has to absorb them by diffusion um, into the cells and then it can um, then it can use them and respire them. Okay, and this takes more time than just absorbing the sucrose in the environment, so that's why it's going to be slower. Okay, and that's basically what's going on when you're making bread. Okay, there's not much sugar in bread flour, um, so um, the yeast is breaking down that um, starch into um, sugars and then absorbing it and then using it to respire and make the bread dough rise. Some people add a little bit of sugar to their bread bread mix and that helps speed up the um, proving process, making the bread rise because the yeast has sugar straight away. Um, some people even add, in, you know, some uh, bread making, um, they add enzymes, they add amylase to the to the starch, to the flour, so that when it, they add water, the enzyme itself just helps break down the starch into sugar for the yeast to use. Okay, so there's lots of little things you can do. In fact, if you wanted to experiment at home, if you want, if you've got some flour and some yeast at home, you could make your own bread with, you know, do some experiments, add some sugar to a flour mix, um, see what happens, and how does it affect the rate at which the the bread dough rises. You know, design your own experiments, have some fun, make some bread, it's yummy. Make sure you add a bit of salt, otherwise it tastes horrible. Um, but be careful, salt is an inhibitor of yeast and will slow it down, because it's, remember, salt's gonna affect osmosis, so don't mix them right next to each other. Okay, anyway, make a few notes to improve your answers um, where you need to, and that is the lesson. There is a quiz associated with this lesson as well.